Hello, my name is Joel Myers, and the topic that I researched was history of photography and printmaking. So I learned quite a bit while researching these topics, but the first thing I kind of looked at was the difference between this digital camera and this film camera. This film camera, you actually have to go out and purchase film, load the camera with the film, and then go out and take your photos. And then after that, you get your film developed, and at that point, you can start making prints in which you'd be able to see your photo at that point. This digital camera, you can take photos and then see the photos that you just took instantly. It doesn't take the developing time. It just has an SD card that stores all of these pictures on it. And another thing I learned was the first person who ever actually uh, created a photo. And that guy's name was Joseph Nisifor, and he created it in 1827. And it took an eight hour long exposure time for that photo. One more thing I learned was how the photographic process works in taking a photo. And so the first step in taking a photo is obviously going out to purchase some film. And after you purchase that film, you can actually load your camera up with that film. And you want to do this in the dark because if you don't do it in the dark, you can risk the chances of that film getting exposed to light. In which if it gets exposed to light, then it's useless at that point. And you'd have to buy new film. And so after you load this camera, this old film camera up with the film, you can actually start taking your photos. And so you go out, set your iOS settings to the right, uh, right settings, and then you also want to set the right exposure time. And so you do that, you take your photos, and then you're ready to start developing your negatives. So the last thing I learned was how printmaking works. And so after you develop those negatives, uh, you can actually go to, into a different darkroom where there's a light set up and you place your your strip of film underneath the light, get the photo you want and so that reflects this image onto a photographic piece of paper and exposes this photographic paper to this image for only a short amount of time and so after you've uh, exposed this paper you can actually take it into what is called the developer you place it in this developer liquid in which this helps decrease the amount of silver ions and so this helps free silver in which uh, helps the image get darker because that nice dark background and then after the developer is done you actually put into what is called a stop bath and the stop bath helps prevent this image getting too dark in which it would get to the point where it's just completely black and so this this is nice so that you can for sure guarantee yourself that your image will not get any darker and then after that you put it into what is called a fixer and this is usually like thiosulfate is the common uh, liquid to to use for this uh, fixer, in which this helps prevent it from getting foggy or getting any darker once you bring it outside, or outside the darkroom into light. And so that's kind of the last liquid people put into water just to rinse off all the chemicals that you just uh, put the photo through. And then after you put it through water, you usually dry it off or let it hang to dry. And then after that, you can actually take it outside the darkroom into light and see how well you developed your photo. And so that's, that's how printmaking works, and uh, it's quite a long process, but it, it works. So even though I've researched quite a bit about the photographic process and printmaking, there are still a couple things I'd like to learn. One thing I'd like to learn is who was the first person ever to think that it would be possible to reproduce or replicate the image that they're seeing through their eyes. I think it would be interesting to see who thought, oh, this image looks cool through my eyes, I'd like to see it later in the future, this exact image, and maybe there's a possible way that we can replicate it, or somehow reproduce it. And so that'd be interesting to learn about. Another thing I'd like to learn is that in printmaking, there's three specific liquids that you use for, to get that image to develop. And so the first liquid's the developer, the second liquid's uh, the stop bath, which is usually an acid, and the third liquid's a uh, uh, usually thiosulfate for the fixer, and so it would be interesting to find out if there's other liquids besides those or other chemicals that you can use to help develop your photos and printmaking. It would be interesting to find out about that. And one last thing I'd like to learn is uh, what new cameras they're coming out with in the future, or to this day, what they're thinking about creating. And it would be interesting just because going from a film camera to, to being able to have it on an SD card and being able to look at your image right away is a huge difference. I'm just interested to see what's the next step. So, yeah, that'd be cool.